The actual axle counter heads themselves come in pairs so they're doubled up. So what you'll have is a transmitter, perfectly sealed unit on an adjustable head that mounts onto the rail. So you can angle this up and down to meet the requirements of the specifications and the voltages and also the receiver which mounts on the opposite side of the rail. So if we were to have, say, let's do this right, the rail would sit between the two of these and we would have a magnetic field influence between the transmitter and the receiver which the train's wheels would then break. These come in pairs, so there will be a pair of these together on the inside of the forefoot and a pair of these on the outside of the forefoot. And that is part of the integrity of the interlocking because obviously you want to be able to directionally count the, um, the, the wheels passing through on the system. Uh, again, there are some insulations that go between the rails and that's purely just to keep down vibration once these things move it can throw your readings out of alignment and there is a magnetic test um, it's an aluminium um, dummy wheel as we call it that acts as the test when we're doing the tests on these out on the track we'll show you one of these mounted out on the track in a bit so this is one of our pair of counting heads out on the track and as you can appreciate the train comes in from this side across this is SK1 head and this is SK2 head so it will influence SK1, then move on to SK2, and the system will see that influence moving in that direction and count the register at the evaluator. The actual count heads themselves, as I mentioned, are bolted through the rail, and then cables go off to the what we call the mushroom, which is where the little electronic units are that generate the frequency uh, that monitors the magnetic field being influenced and then as it's influenced, send that information back line side by the cables to the evaluator room at the office end. Out on track itself, the mushrooms um, at the field end, as we nickname them, they're the units that generate the frequencies and voltages that go to the actual axle counter heads, SK1 and SK2, that register the presence of a train passing through the magnetic field and operate the output that goes back to the office end at the evaluator, which we're looking at next. And basically, to I'm not going to go into the units outside, but what you have is a generator which creates the voltages uh, and with the ability to adjust that and the frequencies. And then you have a pair of modules that looks at both of those heads, SK1 and SK2. So it will be a module for SK1 and a module for SK2. And as you operate, say, the dummy wheel through or a train wheel through those heads in, in the correct direction, what will happen is, first thing that will happen is it will drop out. The, um, the actual indications, normally these sit at green to tell you everything's okay. That will drop out and then it will go to red as the train's wheels influence that magnetic field. And these need to operate in sequence correctly. So everything's doubled up. There's parity between things and then these will generate the frequency that goes back into the power unit that will then go back line side via telephone cables, um, multi-core telephone cables that goes back to the evaluator. We've already looked at the field end. If we look at the office end, we have the actual evaluator equipment. Now this is an old unit, the 7030 um, series equipment and this one having been dumped on the shelves for some years you can see the cards have been badly seated so this one has actually dropped out of its small plastic guide um, so this is you need to be very careful with these cards when they're stored correctly store them in their anti-static um, cling film that, that it comes with the little plastic wallets and store them correctly what we basically have in an evaluator, and I won't go too much into it because obviously it's the company's property and the manufacturer's own documentation, but basically what you have is a, uh, a voltage module at the end that governs the input voltages for controlling this system. We have inputs from the outside world, from the, the mushroom and the evaluator heads down at the track. They come in on these pair of cards here where they are compared and the interlocking then says, you know, is that the right frequency? Is it within spec for the voltages we're expecting? And can we take that then forward and pass it to the interlocking? You have several other cards as part of the system. We won't go too much into. 
one thing you do have is the relay card in this case it's called the WDH um, now the relay card does have a, an output fuse on it one of the handy things I have learned over the years is that on the actual setup of the relays they act a bit like a track relay so instead of having on a track relay you would have say an up contact and a back contact for the track clear and the track occupied what you have on this system is you have a track clear contact a track occupied contact a um, special contact which is used as part of this for driving the interlocking uh, for the reset procedure but you also have basically what is effectively a tipper at the bottom so it's track clear and track occupied repeat out to the reset system and a special out to the reset system um, when you watch a train go through you'll see these relays will operate in a sequence it's a, in effect it's a bit of boolean logic you can uh, on a track relay you can either have one or zero you can never have in the middle um because technically that ends up as a zero as well track proved not not clear so on this being as the axle counters don't they prove the track clear and also prove the track occupied unlike a track circuit which proves the uh, the absence of a train and the integrity of the rails as part of the circuit on here the relay proves that if the track is clear you can also not have the track occupied so you can never have both states where a relay is jammed up by accident um, what you also have is you have this card the bubble card which is where we measure all our voltages from and it's not easy to see but the incoming heads out on the track if we were to just have a standard axle counter section where we had uh, one pair of axle counters counting in that's sk1 sk2 heads and then the exit sk1 and sk2 heads they would come in on these, these terminals here we'd be able to measure them so as a pair 1a and 1b would be a pair they'd be a pair of counters and out on the track again 2a and 2b would be a pair of counters and you can have four of them as you can appreciate some axle counters will go across points and junctions so you may count in on one head and out on a separate head or going in the other direction you can count in on one head and out on another head so you can sometimes have the count out heads in another evaluator unit um, not always in the same evaluator uh, what you also then have you have some fuse cards here on the side of the SIPL card uh, and a status, status LED green and red for track up and down um, which is driven off the relays as well and as I all mentioned the voltage cards there normally in operation you will see this LED unlit this is important this LED what happens with this little reset button here if the interlocking says for any reason I am not happy with the voltages and the frequencies that I'm getting coming from the line side units say for instance a lightning strike you get a massive burst of EM it, it goes into the line side cables that connect the mushrooms to from the field ends to the office end it will throw the system out and the evaluator will lock itself out from the interlocking and say I'm not going to do anything else until a technician comes and physically looks at me to tell me what's wrong um, that's for safety and it will light that LED and drop itself out and occupy the interlocking and then what will happen is you would have to physically reset that button to restart this evaluator um, as the train passes through the count heads SK1 and SK2 it will operate these LEDs so you can actually see the motion it's just very quick though um, and likewise the count out heads SK1 and SK2 again will operate on these uh, these check for the frequencies and the voltages coming from the actual evaluator uh, mushrooms out on the ground that everything is correct so that's the old 7030 series these are quite old now uh, standard rack mount equipment um, there are newer versions of these as with any safe interlocking system there must be cooperation between the technician and the interlocking out on the ground and the signal box itself as to the restoration procedure especially for track circuits uh, looking back at the seven tunnel incident this is quite important and I know the video that I was shown when I was a young technician and seven tunnel incident there was a there was a big fuse there and a cam master fuse that was pulled but in reality this is what you go through now so when the axle counter drops out uh, one thing that will happen is it, the technician will come need to come and look at why that's failed sort out the problem and restore it with the box and there's a reset and restore procedure the reset procedure as I mentioned, if the interlocking is dropped out, you can press the button on the evaluator to reset it, or there may be another fault and change the component. So then you need to go through the reset procedure, and there is a key which operates, which you turn to reset, and you press the reset button. That will restroke the 
evaluator back into action and it will show the evaluator clear but it will still show the interlocking occupied and then you need to go through a cooperative process with the signaler and that is basically holding the restoration button while the signaler operates his restoration button at his end regardless of what that is on Westcat systems it can be um, clicking the mouse several times uh, to keep it going to restroke it or it could be a button fixed on the, the panel itself to get it to reset and then the system will eventually reset this link is actually part of that restoration process you when you come to work on this, the evaluator system to prevent it from accidentally resetting say should you be changing contacts or relays you have to disconnect the link first and that that removes the evaluator from the system the second you remove that link this will drop out and show uh, evaluator occupied and the interlocking occupied so the restoration procedure is quite a complex one it changes from place to place these are quite newer boxes um, there are some older boxes with less indication outputs uh, and and a slightly different restoration procedure as well and again some places uh, up to date have a the ability to run a, um, a sweep train through to reset the uh, the first first time after a train's gone through as well so there are various different ways to do it i mentioned that you can have problems with lightning uh, certainly axle council covering large sections in the middle of nowhere can suffer with lightning strikes um, these are lightning protection units and they are simply fitted with gas discharge capacitors uh, in a normal state uh, same as on Aster tracks etc the top and bottom of the gas discharge capacitor will be wired across the circuit and the middle one which is wired to ground will have no connection between the top and bottom and the middle when a high strike voltage hits gas discharge capacitor it allows to jump across to the middle which is to earth to ground and therefore takes the current down to ground quickly uh, avoiding damage to the sensitive electronic components inside the evaluators uh, obviously the gas discharge capacitor blows you replace that with another one these are pretty standard effects and there's also some little lightning protection diodes in there as well so there's quite a good system set up there and again galvanically shielded Everything's got a little shield that has frequency coming in. So here we see one of the axle counter evaluators now showing as occupied. And the train just counting through. And there it goes to clear. And we'll see this now is showing occupied. So the evaluator is occupied and the interlocking. Which if you look across at the evaluator, you can see that it's tripped itself out. When the train clears, it will then restore itself we can tell the system is showing occupied because the red led is lit on the svb card telling us the system is occupied so we're just going to wait now for the train to go through and there you go it's now showing clear and the evaluator and the interlocking are now showing clear as well 